I've been wondering whether you can connect a Studio Display 5K to an old 2013 Mac Pro. And that's actually a little bit harder than it might seem because first of all, this has a Thunderbolt 3 connection and the Mac Pro, uh, it only has Thunderbolt 2. So we can maybe use Apple's uh, Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. Um, but there's another issue with this and that is that the Mac Pro doesn't officially support any more than 4K. Now you might think to yourself, well, 5K versus 4K, it's not that much different, right? It's just one more. But actually, if you add up the pixels, you'll find that 5K is something like 78% more pixels than 4K. It is a much, much bigger resolution. So uh, the Mac Pro can't do it out of the box. And I suspect if we try to attach a studio display directly to the Mac Pro, it'll probably work, uh, but we're only going to get 4K resolution, which would be a total waste of this lovely display. But nonetheless, let's give it a try. Now, one slight issue with using this particular adapter is it's got the Thunderbolt 3 plug at one end, a USB-C style connector or Type-C connector, and then we uh, have a Thunderbolt 2 connector at the other end. So we will also need a Thunderbolt 2 cable. So let's give this a go. So we're plugged into the Mac Pro. The screen has lit up. Hello. There we go. It works. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to know how much of the functionality in this display we can actually use. So let's just start off with the downstream USB ports. Uh, I've got a, a Samsung T7 drive here, which I'm going to plug into the back of the studio display. My suspicion is that it might not work, but uh, let's give it a try. And it has appeared on the desktop. It's on this display here. That's amazing. So you can actually use the USB-C ports on the back. Obviously, we are going to be limited by Thunderbolt 2 bandwidth, which is 20 gigabits per second, as opposed to Thunderbolt 3, which is 40 gigabits per second. So it's not like we can attach loads and loads of USB devices and get them running at top speed. Um, perhaps we should just do a quick disk speed test. So we'll just select our Samsung drive and let's give it a quick test. And yeah, that's uh, not particularly great performance. So kind of interesting result there. So if we connect a Samsung T7 USB drive, bear in mind that this is a, a 10 gigabit USB drive and we're getting very slow write performance. So just shy of 300 megabytes per second, uh, but we're getting read speeds of 841 megabytes per second, which is uh, about what you'd expect from a T7. So yeah, it's, that's quite useful, I suppose. The display, although it looks lovely, and I don't know how well this comes across in the video, it does look really nice, but it, uh, there's a bit of latency and uh, it's clearly not running at 5K resolution. So let's just go into our system settings and see what we've actually got. So just looking at the various resolutions that are on offer, and the highest is 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. So you could run it like this at native 4K. Um, Obviously, we don't do that with our Mac displays. We use them in scaled mode. So it was actually running like a 1080p display. Um, but we could, we could try doing some, um, some different scaling. Let's have a look. So if I just uh, switch that back to the, this mode, let's use this more space. So that's a scaled display resolution that makes a bit more use of the size of the display that we've got here. So. Yeah, you can use this display. It actually looks pretty good, it looks sharp, but we're not getting full 5K resolution uh, because the Mac Pro doesn't support it out of the box. But I've got a little uh, plan to fix that in a moment. But first of all, let's just see if we can use the camera and the speakers. And also we wanna be able to control the brightness of the display. Uh, the studio display doesn't have any controls on board. So I'm gonna to need to use the keyboard and I don't know how well you can see that because my little little display is in the way but if I use the keyboard shortcuts you can see it is indeed adjusting the brightness of the display. Great. Uh, let's just try playing some music. Okay so we've got the YouTube audio library up so I won't get any copyright strikes if I play some music. I've selected the studio display speakers which do show in the system preferences and uh, let's just pick a track at random. There we go, it works. and I can control the volume via the keyboard. So uh, I think it's probably fairly inevitable that 
the camera will also work. But let's just quickly open Photo Booth to see. And uh, the webcam light has come on, but I'm not showing for some reason. Let's just uh, double check the preferences. It says use the studio display camera, but I'm not seeing anything. Okay, so I don't think the webcam is gonna work for us. I've just tried this website that you can use to test your webcam and that's not uh, firing it up either. So for some reason, on this machine, the webcam doesn't work. Although the light comes on and it appears like it's going to work, it actually doesn't. Uh, now that might be something to do with the operating system version I'm running, or that may just be the common cause. I haven't done any research prior to doing this video. I'm experiencing this first time along with you. But of course, you'll have looked at the thumbnail of the video and the title, and you'll wanna see whether or not we can run this at 5K. Now, of course, we can't do that without the help of another device. Fortunately, I have one. And if you've been watching the channel recently, you'll know that I've been playing around with uh, eGPUs on the Mac Pro. So let's just get ourselves organized here. I have got the Blackmagic eGPU. Uh, let's just unplug this display and uh, get my, uh, my little portable display back up and running a moment. Now, if you watch my video on this, you'll know that the, this particular Blackmagic Design eGPU here has a Radeon Pro 580 in it. And there's no real point in running one of these with this particular Mac Pro, which has the D700 GPUs in it. It doesn't really give you much of a performance benefit. But there is one reason why you might want to do it. And that is because this eGPU has two Thunderbolt ports. So in theory, you can connect a Thunderbolt display like the studio display. Does that mean that it will run at 5K resolution? There's only one way to find out. Now to connect the eGPU to the Mac Pro, we're again going to be using this uh, adapter and Thunderbolt 2 cable. So plug that into there and uh, let's turn this around and we'll plug the other end into our Mac Pro. And occasionally when you do this, you will find the Mac Pro just crashes for whatever reason, but let's give it a go. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but we do have the eGPU icon over here. And if I click on that, it says disconnect AMD Radeon Pro 580. So the eGPU is connected and is working. If you want to connect an eGPU to your Mac Pro just for fun, I'm not recommending you do this uh, for performance or uh, for a serious machine in 2025. But if you want to do it just for fun, then uh, check out the video I made on that. So in theory, now all we need to do is plug the Thunderbolt 3 cable from the studio display into the other Thunderbolt socket on here. I've never done this before, so we're experiencing it live with you. The screen has lit up. And it works. Look at that. That's awesome. Okay, first thing that I'm gonna wanna test is, uh, let's open up the system preferences and just have a look at the display settings. And let's see whether we're actually getting 5K resolution. Uh, I can already see that we are. That's really quite exciting. So if we go to our studio display here and if hold down the option key and press scaled, it will show us all the available resolutions and you can see we're running at uh, 5K scaled down to look like 1440p. So we have the full 5120 by 2880 resolution available to us. And that's really cool. Now, just let's be clear here. I'm not for a moment suggesting that you should rush out and buy one of the world's most uh, expensive and arguably overpriced displays, and then go out and drop a load of money on an eGPU just so you can get some vintage Mac Pro working at 5K. But if like me, um, you're using the Mac Pro as a bit of fun and you already have other Macs and you have a studio display, it's kind of cool to know that you can connect up your Mac Pro. Or what if you're a professional who's heavily invested in the 2013 Mac Pro and you want some additional screen real estate? Well, then in that case, uh, you know, you might be able to pick up one of these used for $100, $200 or something like that. It might be a nice way to, to get yourself a bit more screen real estate. So the other questions that we need to answer is, can we still use the USB ports that are on the back of the studio display? Uh, I still have the T7 plugged into the back. And as you can see, it is actually mounted here on the desktop, so that's working as well. Um, so let's do another speed test just to see whether we get any difference in performance. Double check we're on the correct drive again. 
Yep. And we'll run our test. Okay, so before we were getting just shy of 300 megabytes per second on right, now we're getting uh, over 500. And we're getting slightly less read performance, but uh, I think overall I would take that result over the uh, connecting the Mac Pro directly to the studio display. So that's actually quite cool. So we can use those downstream ports. And of course the Blackmagic eGPU does also have additional USB type A's. Um, I think those are five gigabit ports. Okay, final tests we need to see. Do the speakers work? Does the webcam work? Uh, so speakers first of all. So again, we've got the YouTube audio library open. Let's just pick a tune at random. Should we go with some classical this time? Let's give that a go. So that works. I've got full control over the speakers. Um, we didn't test the brightness. Let's just do that as well. We'll stop this playing. And we use the brightness keys on the keyboard and yeah, that's working fine as well. So final test, will the webcam work? Uh, didn't work when we connected directly to the Mac Pro. Green light is on, but again, we are getting no picture. So I need to do a bit more research on that because I don't see why it shouldn't work. I mean, the webcam is basically a USB device and as we've already shown, other USB devices will work on the system. So uh, it might be a security thing because Monterey is an unsupported OS. So, and of course you can't go higher than Monterey if you want to use an eGPU. So I guess that is the way it is. You won't be able to use the webcam on the studio display. Not the end of the world though, because you could soon add a Logitech camera or whatever. Uh, and plug it into the USB ports. So overall, an interesting experiment. Uh, one that I've been waiting to do for quite a while, and I think it's kind of cool that you can uh, use these old machines with a bit of eGPU assistance to drive a very current display and have peripheral connectivity. Um, but is it of any use in, in 2025, other than just as a curiosity? I don't know, there might be some folks out there who are in very niche situations where this does make sense, but I think for the vast majority of people, of course it doesn't. It's just a bit of fun. Uh, so I hope you found it fun and interesting to have a look at today. Thanks for joining me. As always, see you again soon for some more geekery.